the recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. here oh there you go <laughs> we already dropped a person welcome uh, everybody to an edition of sports Church right here on vet radio syndicate the recognized symbol of excellence online entertainment for veterans and patriots alike i am your host bartender producer uh john kirby aka mini united states marine corps veteran 2311 was my mos along with the wonderful and always colorful anton christensen i also went full pogue a uh, notorious POG when I went to Marine Corps Air Station Miramar and lived in basically a hotel room. It was pretty awesome. So uh, I got to take care of a little business first. As you saw in the intro there, Beer BQ Sauce is our sponsor. And uh, get over to beerbqsauce.com or go to the Facebook page, uh, Beer BQ Sauce, and hit the Shop Now button. Check out all he has there to offer. Tremendous sauces. I got some coming my way here finally. Uh, well, whatever gets shipped to me, but I'm sure it's probably already been on its way. Also, want to direct you over to the VR of uh, Vet Radio Syndicate Facebook page. Check out all the shirts we got out there. We've got five. We got uh, straight out of quarantine. Uh, Marines are comfortable with violence. The VRS logo shirt. Jody did me a favor, and I know I'm forgetting one, and I can't remember. Oh, the VRS, VRS logo shirt, I think. And uh, yeah, all under twenty dollars. Great prints, great material, and all proceeds go right back in the station to help us promote our shows. Uh, I am uh, not checking out the comments right now because I'm watching uh, the Bills Raiders game on, on the side. But uh, let's check in with everybody. Let's see if uh, Jade is gonna hook back up with this. I, I don't know what happened to yeah, her. She's but, in but... the comments right now. She's yeah. saying hello in the comments, but <laughs> she's not on the. I can't put her in the thing. She's not back on. There. She's gonna join back in. But uh... all right, uh, let's check in. Let's go with uh, T. Uh, first, uh, how's your week been, man? Oh, all right. Um, we went down to West Bend yesterday for a little get together, uh, for some of my wife's friends. Um, a lot of karaoke and whatnot because it's all Filipinos. <laughs> um, and then, uh, <laughs> today, today I was just working on the uh, my living room. I've been doing this Venetian plaster thing to our living room, so. I got the three layers done on the one wall, and I got to sand it down for the finish after the show's done. But at least I got one of them done, <laughs> and I still got the rest of the room to go. And I like put like twelve hours into this one wall, so yeah, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Jeez! All right, uh, Anton, what's going on, brother? What is up? How are you all doing today? Eh, eh. Man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real, like, really yeah. bad days and hey i'm the one should be sad right now are you watching that game it's depressing well, well that... tell me i got one of my top receivers in that game and he ain't doing jack so uh, no he's one of your top receivers that's what the problem is right there <laughs> he is. that's, he that's, that's, a, that's it in the nutshell yeah. <laughs> i have just had the worst worst year so far uh with uh fantasy man it's just oh it's it's brutal it you is absolutely the draft and you never got any better no, it started with the draft. Is right. Um, all right, uh, pops. What's uh, what's been happening for you this week? A couple of really, really interesting races over the weekend. The uh, Harvest Grand Prix on Friday and Saturday. Uh, interesting races. Uh, Joseph Newgarden won the race on Friday. Uh, picked up a whole bunch of points on on uh, Scott Dixon. You know, there's there's still the race for the championship, and Dixon going for a sixth, and Newgarden going for his third. So it's a, it's a good battle. And then on on Saturday, uh, it was Will Power uh, grabbing the win for the uh, second time this year. He's been having a terrible year, and he came back and and won the uh, first race at at, uh, uh, Mid-Ohio and then uh, came back and won the the second race here. So it was excellent races. On NASCAR scene, the NASCAR boys were down at Talladega, and that's just a crash fest. So I don't even consider it racing. So, <laughs> so where Chase Briscoe won it, but, uh, it was just a battle of uh, who was going to survive. It really came down to who got lucky and who didn't. 
Gotcha. Uh, Jade, uh, thanks for joining us this week. And, uh, what's going on? Oh, not much. Just finished out the week of the uh, for my son just being back at school for four days in person. I had a meeting on Friday or meeting on Friday with his uh, teachers and his team. And it turns out that I was actually doing better with uh, remote learning than I was giving myself credit for. But I thank baby Jesus one day a week now. And it's mainly just to do makeup work that he doesn't get done during the week. And then I also did something last night that of you mentioned. What? What was that? Hmm? It's blue. <laughs> I was going to ask oh, you. That's oh. something different. Oh, 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 okay. Well, hey. <laughs> Smurfette. Oh. Well, it's, nice. it's actually pretty purple, but the way that the light and stuff like that and camera picks it up, which my camera, for whatever reason, was just like got taken over, and that's why I dropped camera, right at the I mean, beginning of the show. Your sleeve looks purple. You got the stripe on your sleeve. Which is probably this a is pink, pink. Stripe, but it looks purple. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know. It's still just the uh, My Little Pony colors, you know. <laughs> yeah, that looks just like a My Little Pony braid. My sister uh, had yeah. My Little Pony. You, you got the braid. My my combat pony. <laughs> oh. Still you, going with that you, nickname. Can you change your name to the mini? Can you change your name to the combat pony? Uh, no, I can't. Not on no, this one. No, he can't. <laughs> she has to do that. Um, yeah, my hey, week, hey, uh, me back on. <laughs> what a shit show my week was, uh, mm-hmm. wife and son were involved in a car accident and, uh, uh, yeah, that'll shake your freaking world to its core, uh, about a foot and a half. And, uh, I don't know what would have happened, but, uh, she's just essentially banged up and, uh, uh, some might say this is a little callous, but unfortunately her tracks of land are severely bruised. So, um, that means no fun time for me. Um, so that's awesome. But, uh, the son is, he didn't even miss a beat. Uh, he was hanging on to the cops and playing with their badges and just having a riot. And he came home and just was fine. He was like, whatever, bro, nothing happened. I'm good. So that was, you know, that was great. Michelle's a little banged up. Nothing's broken though. So, uh, Jane probably, Jane probably thought it was entertainment. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, and the possibility, uh, definite possibility of uh, going 0 for 4 in fantasy for the first time in my entire life, and that's 23 years of fantasy football experience. And oh, yeah, it's uh, it's a tough pill to swallow. Uh, we had a little UFC going on. You want to start and lead us off there with Pook? Uh, not a big night, but uh, none of a fun going. night. Yeah, still a fun night. Did you, and, uh, did you see any of the fights, man? No, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to. I was uh, drowning my sorrows last night. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't watch anything. I was just sitting on the porch, just uh, getting hammered, trying to deal with some shit. So, yeah. I didn't watch any of them. I wish I would have, because I, if I would have known Holly Holm was fighting, I would have yeah, Holly Holm, watched it. Holly Holmes put on a hell of a show. I mean, there was other fights. I'm actually trying to pull it up on my cell phone because I, regrettably, I I don't remember all the all the names of the fighters, but I do remember the fights. I seen them. I watched all of them from the beginning to end, and there were some really good fights. And that ending with that Holly Holmes fight, man. Holly Holmes, you know, I think she's got what it takes to contend again, man. She's 38 years old. She looks just as good as anybody else. Did you have a chance to see that fight, T? While I'm pulling up these other fights, did you have a chance to see that fight? No, unfortunately, I didn't get to see any of the fights this week. Well, uh, I mean, it was kind of like it, it was kind of like um, it, it was definitely it was definitely a made for TV card, no doubt. The big the big fights coming up here is going to be uh, Naga Madoff here versus. Uh, Versus Gaethje. And who you guys got in that one? Oh, God. I don't know. Uh, when's that, when's uh, that coming off? Pretty sure that's going to be this weekend. It's the next event, no matter what. No matter what, it's the next event. Yeah. Pretty sure it's coming up this weekend. Yeah. I'm going with Khabib. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't, Which, I don't. Next week? I don't see it on next week's. All right. Where's the, who, who the, who's fighting next week? 
They got a. Uh, they got a. The main card is uh, Marlon Morales and Corey. That's Sandhagen. right. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. You're right. You're right. I did see him promote that. I'm looking past that. I'm sorry. You know, maybe that's not good, but uh, I'm kind of looking past that. I'm really looking forward towards this uh, Justin Gaethje and Khabib Nagamadoff fight. I don't see when is this supposed to come up. I don't. I don't. I'm looking for it. How far ahead? Because the, the man, next it should be happening, out. man. It should be happening. It should be the next. Uh, I thought it was the next one. Maybe I'm full of crap. Yeah, like uh, the next big one I see is. Uh, oh yeah, you're, okay. All right. So you got two. You got you got two. You got the Morales and the Sandhagen, and then you're gonna have um, and then you're gonna have a uh, fight night. It's the Korean Zabi fight night, and then October 24th is the Gaethje fight. I was looking. Up, I was looking. I was looking past all of those fights. To be honest with you. Sorry <laughs> about that. I really was. I mean, there's the. I mean, honestly, honestly, the UFC's putting out a lot of product, and a lot of it's really good. But, I mean, what grabs the interest of the casual fan is gonna, you know, is is the that is what I got my eye on too. It's like a dream match. I'm salivating for it. You know what I mean? I'm excited. I'm excited. It's like uh, if you're an MMA fan, it's almost like it's almost like a, an NFC championship. Maybe I don't know. You know what I mean? It's a big deal. You know, a championship fight. Maybe bigger than that. Maybe maybe it, it depending on who it is. Like here's Khabib. If he loses, that's huge. You yeah. Know, you know, and he's got a good chance to lose. I mean, rephrase that. There's a chance of him losing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and yeah, a fight I, like that, anybody could. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Did you see that I, video I, we had on on uh, Facebook? Uh, no, not at all. I'm. I oh. haven't been on Facebook. I've been staying oh, away. Right, I'm, right. I've been trying to quit. I've been trying to quit that addiction. <laughs> I've actually, I've actually earned myself in a twelve-step program. Um, it's a social <laughs> anonymous. A social. Um. What What do you call that? Media, social, social media. media, yeah, anonymous kind of thing. It's a, it's a group we got. We got I, I group still group. don't know who, who was in that fight. That was outrageous. Guy, uh, took, guy, took, guy took a shot to, to his, his rib cage and obviously busted his rib. He's backing up, and his guy decides to come at him, and this guy just backs up and pops him on the way in and just knocks him out. <laughs> it looked like the guy was done, and he, he ended up running the other guy. Was that last night, Pops? No, no this is a while ago. I, yeah. I put it on the Sports Church page. Um, okay, right on. Yeah. And uh, and I actually think I put it on the uh, Vet Radio Syndicate page. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Please uh, share us out. I'll be trying to share a show here and there. But uh, need all help we can get because we have not been doing very well lately for some reason. I don't know why. Um yeah, hey, Maybe, who, yeah, I want, people just ain't oh, interested man. in sports as much as they used to be. <laughs> I know, unfortunately. Uh, hey, Pook, I want to ask you something. I watched something today uh, about MMA in general and the really messed up dangers of cutting weight. What do you think about that, man? Like, there's been some serious issues with that lately. There's been you know, some deaths. These- there's been some some hospitals, a lot of hospitalizations. I mean, I watched this program. It was on Real Sports with Brian Gumble, and uh, holy cow! I mean, this one girl had to be rushed to the hospital because her kidneys were shutting down. Like, just holy crap! Any man. you drop 15, 20 pounds in a day, you know you're screwing your body. Yeah, I mean, what do you think, Poog? I mean, that that just sounds like oh god. There was some I, I there's something I knew about, but I didn't know it was quite that bad. I mean, Jesus, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> Honestly, I think it's maybe something that the UFC. Um, people on the inside would like to change. Uh, yeah. Dana White's uh, uh, official stance on it is that he, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, kind of thing, you know. But one championships over there in the, and I was going to say the Orient, the Asia. <laughs> <laughs> but one championships over there, they do they do a hydration test on you, so they know what your weight's supposed to be. They know what you're supposed to be fighting at, and that's your weight. And that's how they do it. And pretty much almost the way it goes all the way on down the line, everyone, like, once they get, head over there to that to that uh, organization, they end up getting bumped up a weight class just because of the hydration test they do. They'll make you take a hydration test mm-hmm. to figure out what weight you should be at, and then that's your weight yeah. class. 
Yeah, actually, I, I don't think this is really anything new. I, I wrestled in high school, too, and this was a this was a big deal back then, too. Um, back when I was in high school, there was a wrestler for UW Lacrosse, I believe, that died um, from cutting weight, and that's when they they outlawed the uh, the rubber suits that guys used to wear, those rubber sauna suits. Yeah, um, yeah. It was only in high school. Those... I had guys doing it in grade school. Yeah, so I mean, they, not, they, had, they had to be under 120 pounds, and I had guys that 135 pounds making making weight. So uh, it's nuts. yeah, it's it's not something it's not something new. It's been going on. I mean, it's been it's happened before. Um, guys die cutting weight in sports like wrestling, MMA, boxing, any anywhere you got to make a weight class. Guys try to cut to the lowest weight they can get to. Uh, you no, know, when I was in high school, they. It changed the rules a little bit too. At the beginning of the season, they gave you a body fat test to make it was so you had to weigh in. They gave you a piss test to see how hydrated you were to make sure you weren't dehydrated for the initial weigh in. And then uh then they gave you a body fat test. And then from that they told you the lowest weight class you'd be allowed to cut to. Yeah. So you were they wouldn't even let you cut it like I couldn't cut all the way down to 103 pounds my senior year. I was a 140 pounder, uh, and I was at like you know six percent body fat. So I'd have to dehydrate myself to get to that. Now, I mean, now I could lose a lot more weight because I don't have six percent body fat anymore. But back then, and they also have <laughs> eating disorders too. That that appears. Um, I know when when I was in high school, there was wrestlers that were diagnosed with bulimia and anorexia as well yeah. this doesn't oh, yeah. seem worth yeah. it man i mean and, and ashley's got that's this guy he made weight by <laughs> believe it or not he made his weight cut by uh uh shaving his head that was, <laughs> that was, yeah. a, it was just dude. like a half a pound of weight and that's all it took and, the, and he just barely made it but he made it and he got the shit beat on him in the first round he got s- submitted but uh, he got choked out but uh you'll yeah, do anything man. to make weight yeah Go up there, butt ass naked, and well, shave is it gonna all the hurt? hair off your body. And would it hurt had, the sport? Had, would it hurt I the had sport if you had more weight classes, guys? Would it hurt the sport? I think I think it would, and that's a lot of people's answer to this. Here's the, here's the here's the reason why it is what it is in the UFC. Why they're why they do it the way they do it. Why they, why they're so old school about it. And there are no there are no hydration tests at all. Like you're saying, you had to take a hydration test, Steve, in high school. There aren't any. So if you can cut weight, you can do it. And like a lot of these guys, they have a wrestling background and pride themselves on being tough people that can cut weight. They look at it like it's their advantage. Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's that's definitely the mentality. I know that was the mentality when I was in high school. You tried to cut to the lowest weight class you could get to because. Then you'd be the biggest, bulkiest guy in that lower weight class. So you tried to cut to the lowest weight class you could get to. <laughs> right. So that's the whole idea. So a lot of these guys, trainers, fighters, uh, pretty much most of the staff, they don't want anything to do with uh, making things safer because they look because they're they look at it like it's their advantage. And yeah. um, there's certain there's certain no, no, fighters. I, I I get the mentality that's behind guys that try cutting all this weight because I've gone through it. I, I lived it. <laughs> I went through where I had like Thanksgiving and all I was eating was rice cakes. I was cutting <laughs> weight for uh, on the water tournament that was coming up. <laughs> so I, I get I get how the I get how I get the mentality these guys have. But I'm it's holding it's up right. It's holding up progress in the whole sport, really. Yeah, I don't. What I look, what I look at as progress, being a guy that you know wants to see two guys fight safely, as safe as we can make it, right, at their optimal um, performance. So, you know, hydration hydration test just makes sense to me, but. Obviously, I don't have a wrestling background, or else I might feel differently about it. All right. Well, that well no, I, 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 I think the hydration tests are a good idea. I, I'm not against that. I'm just saying I could, I could see why they'd resist it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it like never. It's ain't, a mentality. It like ain't never gonna happen. 
All right, I was able to pull this up on my phone, the card, the actual card that we, that I saw last night. And um, the really notable fight that I saw was the Carlos Condon fight, you know, because he's he hasn't been doing good lately, as as everybody probably knows, you know. He's, he well, actually he's been went, fighting forever. Well, he's coming off. I wanted to make sure before I said it out loud, I wanted to make sure it was five losses. I told that to my father last night, but it is. I just looked it up. He's coming off of five losses. And um, obviously, he's been banged up. He's had a lot of injuries, things of that nature. I don't think he'll ever be the same. Um, you know, some guys just need to hang it up. It's easy for the poop to say that, though, you know, uh, <laughs> jack off behind a microphone, right? You know, this, well, is, this, yeah, guy's he... this is this guy's livelihood. But he won. He's, he actually beat Court McGee last night. So he's, he's one of those guys. Going. He's coming from a dying. He's coming from a dying class. He's he's one of the uh, guys that came over from the WEC when the uh, UFC absorbed the you, you absorbed them. There's not many of those guys left. I mean, you got what Condit. You got uh, um, Pettis, Pettis. You got Jose Aldo. Uh, Donald Cerrone. Um, I can't think of too many other WEC fighters that are still in. I mean, yeah, a ton of those guys have already retired, like Uriah Faber and um, Chael Sonnen. So, I got a new favorite fighter, though. And he's got to be pretty new because he doesn't have a picture. But uh, he, uh, Loma Look Boonmi, has got to be the greatest name in the UFC right now. Oh, the, that female <laughs> fight. Oh my God! Let me say, uh, you know what? I forgot all about that. And when you when you put me on the spot and you're asking me about the UFC fights before I pulled everything up, oh my God! That that lady, oh my God! Jermaine got, De, Jermaine D. Randami? No, 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 no! You just said her name. You just said her name. What? what how say it again? Luma oh, look up on me. Right, right. She is freaking incredible. What's her name? Loma look boon me. She's got legs like tree trunks, man. I guarantee you she could kick some guys' asses in her weight class. I guarantee it. She <laughs> kicks like a mule, man. Yeah. Well, she's Mu uh I'm writing her down because I'm Mutai Mu specialist, man. Oh hey, god, hey, that's how'd wonder. you spell her last name? Uh L look L O O K yeah. O O N M E E. And she just dismantled the girl that she was fighting. And there's a guy with my nickname in it, Luigi Vendramini. So I like that guy already. But, uh, yeah, I, I got to make it more point to get back fighting. into that. I like his name. I like his name. Yeah, it's just a chick thing, right? You know, oh, I'm going to pick him because he's got a nice name. You know, and it's just whatever. Uh, yeah, I got to get back into that. But, uh, like I said earlier this week, it's been a fucking train wreck of a week. And there, there's even more to the story, but I won't go public with that. But, uh yeah, it was uh, just shook me up to the core, man. You never want to get that phone call, and so I was just the last thing I was thinking about was watching the UFC. But I, again, if I would have known Holly Holmes was uh, was uh, on the card and fighting, I definitely would have at least caught that. And I'm regretting that I didn't. I guess I can watch it back on YouTube because I'm sure UFC put it up as a free fight of the week or something. But uh, yeah, what, what else? I mean, I, I was looking ahead. Looks like Anderson Silva's got a fight coming up too. Real, real, real. Yeah, I don't, I don't know much about that. I'd have to literally look that up. But real quick before you move on, Ami, uh, say that girl's name again. The Tiger. Uh, Luke. Hold on a second. Luke. I don't want to butcher it. I'm always butchering these fighters' names. It's uh, Loma. Uh, Loma uh, Luke Boomy. Yeah, Luke Boomy. Yeah, that girl is going to be something special in the UFC for All sure. Right, you know that you can't no picture. Wait. God, how did you figure this out? Where did you see her? She's on the card. She, she fought the last night. She, she fought, fought last, last night. night. But here's oh, the yeah. thing. I sat, I sat down, right, and I didn't make any bets this week on, on UFC anyway. I'm on football. That's another story. I'm getting my ass handed to me. Mm. It's disgusting. <laughs> Freaking sickening, man. So anyway, let's, let's not get into that. But I'm sitting down to watch this Luke Bumi, right? Am I saying mm -hmm. that right? And – I'm looking and I see she only has four fights. I'm like, oh, four and one, five fights, five fights, right? And I'm looking at the odds. She's the freaking favorite, minus 135. So I'm like, oh my God, this looks like a slam dunk because 
they know what they got. They're not going to put somebody that's only had five fights in prime time. They know what they got. She is they're, they're, this. She, she's the next biggest thing in the women's division, man. I'm telling you. They wouldn't be putting her on primetime television with only five wins if that wasn't the case. Only five fights, pardon me. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows? I mean, I never heard of her before, but uh, apparently she's got... Uh, she's a super badass. She yeah. kicks like a mule, man. <laughs> what, 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 what is her background? Is she Muay Thai or... Muay Thai, but she was handling... Like, she wouldn't let that other girl take her down at all, man. She'd just get her in the Muay Thai clinch. And just yeah. start freaking cracking her with knees and the chest and then the guts and some a couple of them connected in the head. And she pressed her against the cage and wouldn't let her take her down. And then when there was any distance, she was just teeing off on her legs with leg kicks. So yeah, I mean, if you're into women's fighting, and I'm really, I'm really not big on it, but I I'm kind of it. I'm kind of big on this girl. She's impressive. Very impressive. Nice. Very nice. And like I said, I'm 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 going to be looking past the next two cards, and I kind of wanted to get you guys' feedback on on who you're taking in that Khabib fight, the Khabib fight versus uh, Justin Gaethje coming up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Gaethje. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go on the. Uh, I'm going to go on the long. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Gaethje just because uh, I want to see Khabib go down. Because fuck Russia. <laughs> That's really all thing I got. I mean, Khabib's a beast. I love it. He did beat Connor, but um, I, I'm gonna go with Justin Gagey. I like, you know, but geez, I mean, I don't know. It, it's gonna be exciting to watch. That's for sure. I mean, that, I'm definitely gonna be down for that. And I think somebody should <clears throat> remind me when that fight's happening so all I right, can bro. watch it. All you right. know, there's all a right. guy. There's a guy actually live streams them. I think he rips them from somewhere, live streams them, and and every like ten seconds he has a fair use act written by the Justice Department that he puts on his screen so he doesn't get shut down. I don't know how he does that, but uh, there's no way he can do that fair use. Yeah, yeah not, not during fifteen seconds. Not during, yeah, not during. Uh, but I don't know. He's getting away with it. I don't know if he's doing it after, right after the fight or what. But I I caught him on YouTube and. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to go that far, but, uh, you know, anyways, uh, T's back. Uh, all right, man. Hey, NHL season is over, so you're kind of screwed, but <laughs> I guess you can double down on the UFC, but uh, why don't you give us a wrap-up on the uh, playoffs in general and the Stanley Cup and uh, the fact that another team that can't make their own ice during the winter uh, won, the, Ed, <laughs> won, won the Stanley Cup. Get me back Cup. into the conversation. And he dropped again. <laughs> Jesus, dude. His internet's like, don't yell at me. Yeah, exactly. Apparently. <laughs> Holy crikey dingo, man. There, and he's back. There he is. Yeah. All right. Try and get this done as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? My internet sucks balls tonight. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning are your uh, Stanley Cup champs. I am bandwagon tonight, and actually the only reason I got this hat in the house is because my son's favorite Eastern Conference team is the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I got a Lightning hat on just because they won the Stanley Cup uh, finals. Uh, they beat the uh, Dallas Stars 2-0 to zero in game six. Um, watching that game, I mean, uh, once it was, it was down to four minutes in the game, and the uh, Stars went on a power play. And uh, they just couldn't get it done. Uh, Pavelski had a brilliant pass to Jamie Ben that just creamed wide of the net that would have made it a 2-1 game and maybe gave them a chance going into the end of the game. But once they didn't get that power play goal in, you knew the game was pretty much over. And, yeah, Tampa brings home the Stanley Cup. Uh, Victor Hedman won the uh, Conn Smythe Trophy for the uh, best uh, – player during the playoffs for the uh, winning team. Um, and Nikita Kucherov, I believe I saw, set a new uh, assist record for the playoffs for uh, by a team. Uh, last year, the thing were expected to be the team to win. They had won the President's Trophy, uh, but once again, the President's Trophy curse kicked in, and they got swept uh, early last year by the Columbus Blue Jackets, but they avenged themselves this year. Brought the uh, Stanley Cup back to Tampa with them. Uh, it's the first time they've won the Cup since 2002. 
Uh, they still have John Cooper, who was the uh, coach of the uh, Lightning back when they won their last Stanley Cup. Um, I like Cooper as a coach, but that's because he used to coach the Green Bay Gamblers. So um, that's <laughs> something he's coached the live before. So I like him as a coach. Um, I would have liked to have seen Pavelski get a cup, uh, cup finally, but. Uh, maybe eventually. Maybe I'll get traded to a team I like eventually. Um, other uh, other uh, news in hockey. Uh, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, they're having a meeting discussing uh, longer penalties for fighting uh, due to coronavirus relief money for the league being – there was a ear tag put on the money that the league was getting for the relief money that they had to do something about fighting in the league. So the government oh of Quebec God. is forcing the Quebec major junior hockey league to uh, address fighting in hockey, which I don't know. Government got better things to do than to try and interfere yeah, with how they should. Play. Yeah, they should <laughs> be involved a lot more things than get involved in fighting and hockey and. I mean, and, my dad have sparred with this on many occasions, but I don't. It doesn't bother me as a part of the game. It, really, it, it just doesn't. It doesn't. It's and it, if, I want to hear Pop's opinion. What's that? I want to hear Pop's opinion. Oh, I, I, I just, I, I just think they like they like fighting go too much, but uh, and that that's not today. It, that's what it was before. I mean, I I've seen the uh, checkers, which was a a IHL team uh, in Indianapolis uh, go up against Fort Wayne, and six of the players ended up staying at Fort Wayne in the hospital. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that. that's not hockey. This would be <laughs> no, no, that's, no. That's a riot. Oh, yeah, there goes T. The. And there anyway, goes the I, again. I just think that they, they let it get away, and uh, uh, it, it right now government. I don't care whose government is. Will use COVID to get to get their their way, and it's just all just a power play, and and they're, they're getting away with it because the people let them. Yeah. I mean, we got a deal going down here in in, in Kentucky, there where the, the governor is doing everything he wants to do, and he has been turned over. Oh, there you go, uh, and he he's been overturned by the, uh, the courts a couple times. They still keep doing it, so. Uh, if they can get away with it, they're going to try and do it. And it's all just a power play. Yeah, yeah. I I agree. Well, And that's the thing I was just going to bring up. And the Quebec thing, the Quebec government isn't even as bad as the reach going on in the Ontario government in Canada. The Ontario Hockey League is looking at playing a season with no fighting or body checking. Because what? of the coronavirus. Oh, get the yeah. f I put, out of here. I Come put the on. article up on Sports Church. They're saying the close contact of body checking cannot happen during this COVID crisis that we're just having. just cancel uh, cocky, the department, Yeah, the, the, well, that's what I put for the quote walking. on. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I put for the quote. Why even have a season? Which, and then this is going to be weird. Cause oh, how, and what happens if they do it? Well, I'm wondering how they're going to handle things, too, because the Ontario Hockey League, the Quebec Major uh, Junior Hockey League that we were just talking about, and then the Western Hockey League, which some of our friends that are with Backwoods might know because uh, the Portland Winterhawks are part of that. Um, they're all part of the CHL, the Canadian Hockey League. This, this is a junior hockey league. It's the highest rated juniors in the world that play in this. A lot of guys go to the NHL from here. And then they all meet up to play the Memorial Cup. The winners of the each of these division have a uh, tournament to play the to award the Memorial Cup at the end of the year. How are they even going to do a tournament when all these leagues are going to have different different rules throughout the league? Ontario isn't even going to allow body checking. Quebec's trying to you know get rid of fighting, and then the Western Hockey League, which has a reputation for being the most physical, is like we're not doing anything about this. Alberta and uh, that's Alberta and uh, what's that Western province? The British Columbia? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But all their teams are out there. <laughs> so yeah, those two Western provinces sense. are like, yeah, they're they're like, uh, it would, 
do what you got to do. Instead <laughs> of saying, no, oh, you know, the no body checking and stuff like that, uh, why don't they just, like, let the players choose if they aren't going to play or not and have it, like, well, assess yeah, their no, own I mean, risk for these, it? You know what I mean? Or assume their own the, risk for yeah, it. None of these guys are going to none of these guys are going to give up their chance to play in these leagues. Cause like I said, a lot of these league, a lot of these players are guys that go on to be drafted into the NHL later. I know, so but really, that's the risk that they would and take then there's, and by then, playing yeah, there's normal. The, there's, the, there's also the USHL here in the States, which that's what the green Bay gamblers and the Madison capitals teams I've gone to watch play before play in, but uh, they're kind of on the same level as the CHL. But I haven't heard of anything getting changed in their league yet. So, and there he goes again. <laughs> I was about to get Christ, pissed man. off anyway because it sounded like I had a damn woodpecker uh, in the tree out front. <laughs> hey, Miss Julie, things. little spot Romaine, what's going on, Chica? Thanks for tuning in. Please share us out. We can use all the help we can get tonight. Uh, as sports is taking a major, major hit, and I've said before, I don't agree with. 99% of what they've done, but uh, I still love the sports and whistle between whistle. I still enjoy myself, although I do mute all the commercials. So, you know, hey. uh, and I encourage everybody else to do that too, or, or just turn your TV off, but uh, whatever. Um, I know that's what drives me crazy about like the games that I have been watching and stuff. I've never realized how much I've like pampered or whatever, or spoiled myself with streaming uh, internet TV in that how Falcon oh. calls it yes, <laughs> with streaming yes. services and not having commercials. And then you watch a game and you have all these commercials and not only do you have the commercials that you're impatient with, but all this bullshit that's just plastered and bombarding you. And mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I wish say people mute. would just, uh, uh Oh, I'm, I almost, uh, I almost uh, had a stroke today when they were talking about, uh, the goat, tweeted that Kareem Hunt's a beast. And I'm like, who's the GOAT? Michael Jordan? Oh, no, no, no. It was LeBron James. And that's about all I'm going to say about NBA basketball. Pops put on a great uh, little um, a little uh, article on Sports Church the other day. You remember that one about the game one of the NBA Finals and how nobody watched it? Nobody <laughs> gives that, 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 that was outrageous. That was just, I, just, I couldn't believe it. They, they had the world's worst ratings and, and the final. What the hell? Hey, you I know. I that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely but I ridiculous. I completely fully doing. believe it. Completely fully. Mm. Yeah. Done <laughs> I was really hoping it was going to be Milwaukee and LA, but uh, uh, the Bucks choked. Choked huge. <laughs> so, yeah, they did. Uh, it's my fault because I jumped on the Bucks bandwagon, and, and so instantly they, uh, like Jade, I have that power, and they tanked, and you know. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> you must have jumped on like right when I jumped off because, like, once they started doing all these, uh, yeah, it's your fault, T. I'm not taking movement. a hit. It's your fault. Now you yeah. jumped off the bandwagon and freaking. Well, what, yeah, I, I jumped off a of basketball altogether, though. <laughs> so, yeah, it was <laughs> probably the, the least, fun. the least talked about uh, uh, topic on Sports Church ever is NBA basketball. Yeah, we, we don't never talk cover about it. Basketball at all. No, a college, you know, is hopefully they're going to get that. I think you said off. more about cricket than you have about basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, we, we, did, never... we did do some cricket scores last week. That's we true. Did. Whatever, yeah, the, we did. whatever the hell those meant. <laughs> yeah, I That's don't, I don't I know what any of those scores meant, but I was playing in a beer them. league. I was playing a beer league softball uh, uh, league, and uh, in between games, they had, they had uh, on Jason Field. They had a cricket game going, and I watched it for like an hour, and I still have I had no idea what was going on. Like I, I don't I don't get that support. I would love to learn though, but because uh, you know, be pretty shit interesting probably to learn. A couple billion people will actually watch that shit, so apparently it's pretty freaking important. I mean, they're they're almost as popular as uh, footballers and. Ah, uh, uh, they call yeah. the soccer. I mean, football. No, you don't think or football? Football, they call it. Yeah, they call it football. We call football. it soccer. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. watch rugby though. I mean, yeah, rugby. Is those bad. Those guys are fucking tough as nails, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, and no, or, and, and they don't wear pads. Yeah, exactly. I don't get that sport. It's okay, though. 
I just see it. I, I, watch I, I it. don't get cricket or I don't get cricket or rugby, but I'd rather watch rugby because it's more physical. You know, I was ex I watched the whole game. I watched the championship on ESPN of rugby, and I was really trying to get into it. And it's just like it reminds me of Smear the Queer. If you ever played that game, Smear the Queer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Smear the Queer with giant goals. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't make a sense, man. I don't know. I even had a guy sit down with me from Australia and tell me what a great game it was. And it, this was after I watched it, not before. He tried to explain all of it to me. And it still was just like, man, it was just so foreign to me. Did you ever watch um did you ever watch a show on uh ESPN Classic when that used to be a network called uh Cheap Seats? They did like obscure games on there. And they had one it was called Florentine Football. I guess it's in like this one city in Italy they do it. But it's crazy. It's just like it's like a football or rugby, but then like guys are you're literally allowed to just beat the shit out of the guys on the other team. So it's like the guy's just running with a ball and somebody will come and punch him in the face. Wow. And then they take him out on a stretcher in the middle of the game. And they don't even stop the game when people get injured. And the referee's <laughs> got a sword. Freaking Italians. <laughs> Jesus. That's too much, man. That's a hey, that that's was like man's the craziest game. thing I ever oh seen. Oh, my God. I Woo. had no idea how it worked, but it looked crazy. <laughs> I got one, I got one get, fight. I got one fight in baseball as a guy drilled me intentionally and because uh, I, I took him for a dinger and then a triple right after that. And I'm like, oh, I'm going cycle, baby. And uh, I guess wrong for a curveball. Uh, there's T's PBR. And uh, I, I took one. Uh, uh, here's here's I, your I joke. Only hold, I, only Giggity. I took one on the chin. And uh, so I, I ran, I, I uh, uh, spit out my dip, uh, actually puked my dip out because I involuntarily swallowed it when I got hit in the chin. And then, uh, yeah, and then I rushed him out. And uh, unlike Robin Ventura, I took my helmet off and threw it at the pitcher. And that dumbass was stupid enough to catch it. And that was all she wrote. Uh, but <laughs> I've had a pitcher come after me after I've hit a home run, too. But uh, I did the, uh, the Bull Durham crash. <laughs> Hit a home run to my bench, and uh, he uh, threw his mitt down and came after me. But uh, my guys got to him before he got to me. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, fighting is fighting. Uh, you know, uh, the unwritten rules of certain sports are kind of ridiculous. I get it, but uh, well, it is what it is. Should we talk about some fantasy football, or should, can we just skip right over it? Because I really don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about auto racing first. How about that, Pops? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it, it, it has been an interesting weekend for auto racing. The IndyCar was racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course. Um, first time they've done they've had any races in October, uh, so that's new for Indy. Uh, they did put on some excellent racing. Um, it's a with, great course, man. I love that course. It's, it's actually challenging. I've, I've played it. I've only done it online. Uh, and on, on my PlayStation, but uh, it is a uh, and that turn one is whoo, <laughs> yeah. Making it onto that, getting it into the infield is a little bit interesting, yeah. Anyway, Joseph Newgarden uh grabbed the lead uh, away from uh, Renas VK and Colin Colton Herta. These two, 20, these guys are only 20 years old, and, and they're they're putting on an excellent show. Uh, I mean. They probably created places about five or six times in the first 15 laps. It was, it was just really, really neat to see. These young kids are just coming on strong. Uh, Rins BK ended up finishing third. He, he started on the pole, which is unusual. This guy is uh, – that's his very first pole shot. Uh, and then uh, Alexander Rossi uh, finished second. Rossi's had some, uh, some good runs at Indy. Uh, this is the first time he was complaining – Felt the officials put it to him uh, with a, a movie made coming off of turn two. But the video showed that he was outside the line. Anyway, uh, so that was the first race with uh, New Garden winning, Rossi second, and uh, and uh, Renus VK. This is a kid from uh, overseas. 
<laughs> what do you do? What do you do in turn two? Because I remember because they're both right. Turn one is is a really sharp cutting uh, hard right, and then right turn, turn two is a right, is another right, correct? Well, no, well, let's see. One is turn in, two goes to the left, and then three goes uh, to the right. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I got you. Uh, anyway, um, Rans BK is the one that, that Ari Lowendijk is, is coaching, uh, and uh, it was it was neat to see. He, he never had a never had a pole position before, and he's never had a a, a podium position. So he got his first pole, and he got his first podium in race number one. In race number two, uh, a guy that has been having a terrible season, Will Power, uh, and probably the fastest guy, the absolute fastest guy in IndyCar racing, is Will Power. Uh, but he's had a terrible season uh, between yellow plate coming out when he's in the pits or what, or missing the pits. He just, he just has not been able to get it done. He, uh, he just dominated the race, the second race. Uh, Fulton Herta, that 20-year-old, did come back and finish in, in second place that race. And Alexander Rossi finished in third. So it was some interesting competition. Now, one of the things that was really interesting to see, we had three guys that we haven't seen in IndyCar for a while. Uh, Hinchcliffe, Leo Castroneves, and Sebastian Borde had rides for these these two races and they will be racing again uh, uh when they get down to florida in a couple weeks it's good finished in 14th the first race 13th the second race probably open 20th and 21st yes. and, and sebastian borde finished 21st and 18th so the, these these are basically superstars mm -hmm. you know, sebastian borde is has got i don't know how many championships four or five championships uh elio is one uh Three race, yeah, three, three in the Amplis 500s. And Hinchcliffe, he, he's just he's a good, good all around guy, and he won Dancing with the Stars. What else can I say? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was uh, that was uh, the deal where the experienced guy came in and uh, and took up some vacant seats. Uh, Hinchcliffe uh, came in and uh, it, he's really it's really a tryout to see how it's going to go next year. Elio is, is trying to get a, a ride with the uh, McLaren McLaren guys. Seabass is driving for uh, AJ Foyt. Now, Seabass was able to turn uh, around teams before in order to, to get things going. But he certainly didn't accomplish anything with AJ Foyt this week. Now, in two weeks or three weeks, when they get down to uh, St. Petersburg, they'll be anxious to see whether or not they're going to be able to make changes so that Seabass uh, can be competitive. He wasn't not competitive this week at all. Anyway, not too many more races left. Uh, the title comes down. New Garden is uh, trailing Scott Dixon by 32 points. Uh, 35 points wins the uh, uh, or is the number of points you win for racing or for winning the race. So I mean, he basically has to win, and Scott has to have trouble in order for uh, uh, New Garden to get it. But, uh, Scott Dixon. He did not have a good race this weekend. He just uh, he just couldn't get it done. So, although I don't know, maybe they're maybe they're doing this just to make things look competitive for the for the final race in, in St. Pete. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens down there. Uh, and that's a street circuit, right? St. Pete. They race on the uh, streets in the in the airport too, right? Or yeah, am I exactly. It uses it uses two street roads, and then the rest of it was all on the airport. Uh, what about uh, Nashville next year? What do you, do you see that? You see yeah, they're, the, uh... they're going to run a street, a, a street race in Nashville, which is kind of crazy. This will this will crack up. NASCAR <laughs> is going to the to the uh, speedway. Nashville's got a speedway, and which IndyCar used to race at, <laughs> and IndyCar is going to a new street race, which includes a probably close to a three quarter mile run. Across the bridge. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I, I just can't wait to see what it looks like when they get to the other side of the bridge. They go one way out of the city and then come right back into the city after about four or five turns on, on the street. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do when they come to the breaking zone at the other ends of the bridge. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be crazy. I have actually got a good question for racing this week. What uh -oh, do you think? Really? About That's it? That's the, I know it's weird. Uh, what do you think about? Uh, I, I heard that NASCAR uh, left Chicagoland Raceway completely off of their schedule for next year at the uh, track down in Joliet, Illinois. 
that what's was, going on with a, that is is that the that death of that bargain. tracker that was a bargain you see chicago land is owned by nascar kentucky is owned by uh what performance i can't remember um used to be the humpy wheeler it is humpy wheeler oh no, it's not it's not humpy it is it's humpy wheeler that owns it anyway so they took one away from Humpy and they took one away from NASCAR. They did give one to Road America, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know whether they haven't announced the schedule for the uh, the uh, Xfinity Core. That's normally who races it at Road America. But uh, uh, next year will be a uh, NASCAR Cup race at Road America, which is kind of cool. Uh, they've been begging for this for years. The problem they've had is that uh, they normally require uh, full garage equipments, you know, standalone garages, and there are no garages at Road America, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, but Elkhart Lake is a lot better than Joliet, Illinois. Oh, it is. I mean, no, be honest with you, Joliet, they used to put on some pretty good shows, but <laughs> they, they don't. There's too many mile and a half, and uh, they're they're eliminating two mile and a half tracks getting rid of Joliet and getting rid of Kentucky. So it, it's a, it's interesting to see that the Road America gets a shot. No, yeah, I was I was just out at uh, Road America like two weeks ago, and uh, yeah, it, it, it really is a pretty beautiful setup they got out there. Yeah, um, yeah it's, you, you it's, can't, it's nice. You can't appreciate it until you actually go out and drive it. You go out and drive the course, it, it's, yeah. it's amazing. I just I just drove the little gone. go kart. I drove the little go kart track that's off to the side. Yeah, of it. <laughs> yeah I know. I didn't get to. I didn't get to drive on the actual. Get out on the real track, and, and and it's a combination of two things. You got to pay attention to what you're doing when you're driving fast. Mm -hmm. Doggone, it's pretty to look around. <laughs> and I think some of the guys have trouble. That's why so many guys go off and five. <laughs> yes. They come down. They're looking at the hillside. Bullshit! I got a break here. <laughs> yep, and now I'm in the sand. Damn it! Yep. <laughs> oh. I can't remember who was it. Who was it that ended up parking on top of somebody? It was somebody who was parking on top of uh, uh, Paul Tracy, I think. Paul Tracy crashed oh, out, God, and another guy came down and parked right on top of him. God, I was there in that turn to for, for that. I don't remember. Shit! Somebody looked. Somebody, you know, well, look it up, Pops. While, while we're moving, we're doing other shit. Uh, what about F one? You haven't said much about F one. <laughs> what about F1? Oh, uh, <laughs> they are, they are, well, Honda says uh, 2021 is their last year. We're getting out again. So this is the, they had to beg their way back in like, three years ago or whatever because they had bailed out. Uh, but they say that uh, they're going the electric route and only the one doesn't do anything with electricity other than the curse. So uh, they say that there is no trade-off there. They don't they don't get anything from the Formula One racing. But uh, Honda is sticking around with IndyCar, which doesn't have anything electric either. So it's kind of funny why why they're getting out. I think it's just a, a cost-saving move. It really comes down to. Is that on a timer? Or are you just pushing a button, making that happen? Hmm. He's got a button. <laughs> I got a button. I got buttons. I oh, got the same way, and that's when he leaves. He yeah. has to go get his, his shot glass. Yeah, well. Anyway, um, it, it, it's obviously go, going to be a, a championship for uh, Lewis Hamilton. There's no lip hands or butts. He's got that all wrapped up. But you have to wait and you know and, and see what happens with the rest of the league. The, uh, the racing point team is going to be um, – oh, man, I can't remember the name of the, the – Car company, Watson Martin, um, and so that that they've been coming out halfway decent, and uh, with the new new ownership, I think they will be uh, they will be a factor to consider. Um, and uh, they, I mean, they've already got a podium, which is unreal for a team like small team like that. Uh, Haas is is sticking around. He uh, threatened to, to bail out, but I think that he got some more money out of the uh, the, the team. Or not the team, but out of the sanctioning body. Uh, so it, it's just basically Lewis Hamilton's show. Uh, he uh, finished third last week, I guess. 
after he took a penalty. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Jesus, that guy. You know, I I can't stand his politics, but Jesus Christ, is he a fucking driver? And I know, I don't know. Like, answer me this. Like, I I think I've asked asked you this before, but if you take Lewis and put him in, like, I don't know. Uh, well, Team Force Indy isn't around anymore, are they? Um, but uh, I don't know. Put him in Red Bull. Put him in uh, somebody outside of the top three. Does he still do the same? No. Yeah. It's, it's it's really it's the car. I mean, the Mercedes car is the top car. Yeah. So he's the top driver in the top car. Uh, would they but, if they went to spec? Would would you be upset? Sorry, they what? went to, they went they to went spec. To, yeah. Oh no, they would never let that happen. I mean, yeah. that's, their, that's their that's their drawing point. We got the world the best the best equipment. No yeah. one can be used with the equipment. The problem is that there's so much disparity between the teams. That, yeah, that's what's week upsetting. Week after week, it's the same guy, same two guys in front, same two guys run for third and fourth, and the same two guys run for fourth and fifth. Yeah, that's just the way it is. That's the way. Uh, that's the way. Any, or excuse me, the, the Formula One is. It's, it, it's whoever has the best car, and Mercedes has had the best car for quite a few, you know, quite a few years. Well, yeah, before that, it was Red Bull, and before that, yeah. it was Ferrari, and, and it's just I don't know. It's it's getting kind of. I I love the tracks, and it, you know, Monaco is. Is my favorite track of all time. I love that, and it was the most impossible track until I watched Jackie Stewart uh, tell me how to how to drive it on YouTube, and then all of a sudden <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm racing online with people around the world, and I'm kicking the shit out of them, which was great. But uh, there's a yeah, you know, hey, there's, there's a little ginger in him, just a little bit. If you can check out the hair, yeah, just a little. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry hey, about that. How you doing, big guy? Hey, you want to wave hi? Wave hi. Your your favorite pretty hey, lady. Your second favorite pretty lady. Hi, James. <laughs> <laughs> he says I'm just kind of. I'll live it. Whatever. Yep. There he goes. There's with the there eyes. we go. Hey, big yeah. guy. Here it we is. We don't get to see as much as we need to. Well, like I said earlier, that was the worst call I ever got in my life, and. uh I don't know. Mama's a little beat up, but uh, he he just got a tiny little bruise, and he didn't miss a beat. So uh, <laughs> angels, angels are looking out for him, and hey, hopefully, Michelle said he's as, he's as rambunctious as ever. Go, oh, <laughs> oh, he is, and he's beating the crap out of his mom on a repeated basis, which is super awesome. <laughs> Oh man, uh, I'm so bad. Because he, 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 he just he loves to 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 wrestle, and he can wrestle yeah. with me, and and it doesn't get hurt. But when he wrestles with mom right now, it's yeah, mom's hurting already, and then you then you get something else on it. Yeah, and he goes, he's just got this superpower of finding like the exact worst spots to like hit her on, and yeah. It's not a very good feeling when your wife is bent over in tears because uh oh. Your son just slapped her in one of her tracks of land and uh, where the seatbelt bruises. And yeah, so you can't really yell at him because he doesn't know, but it's just like, oh, brutal. You know, what's going to be neat is that Sebastian Vettel is, is leaving I'm Red Bull. Having a hard time or having trouble connecting. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Yeah, we hear you. And we I just wanted to add with James, too, is like hopefully he's so young that he won't uh, really remember. The accident no. and stuff like that, because when they're a little bit older and stuff like that, the chances of remembering it. And... Yeah, well, there's a lot of things. I'm glad that he's young. He's he's not going to know about this Rona. He's not going to know, you know, about the mom being in an accident and whatnot. And so, you know, it's funny because I keep thinking like, oh God, please don't play football. Oh God, please don't be a race car driver. And the more I think I'm going to do that, the more he's probably going to go in. <laughs> So, I don't know. We'll see. Like, Come on, baseball, bro. Come on, it's baseball. You know, I mean, you know. I got picked off of off of a bench, hung over off my ass to play two in two third seasons of semi pro baseball, and uh, I'm glad I did it. But god damn, I was glad I'm when I retired too, because it was <laughs> it was just it was time. When you're uh, at the, when I retired, it was uh, I was 12 years older than the next. Uh, player on the team so it was time to hang up them cleats um so what do you guys want to talk about next you want to do the fantasy football thing no okay um <laughs> no you can't get out of it that easy what are you talking about i'm having uh, trouble 
<laughs> You're not I'm dead gonna, yet. I'm sorry. I got it. I'm gonna reboot. I'll be back because I can't see or hear anybody okay. other than me. All right, we, we got you. But You're go not, ahead. Let's talk about what what this week in fantasy football like. But you're, he's not dead yet. He's taught. He's such a freaking doomsday uh, oh, guy. He's such yeah. a freaking glass is half empty fella, man. Dad, he, am I a doomsday, dad? Am I a doomsday guy? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, you know I am. You I'm constantly looking, yell I'm at me about at, it. Here's the thing. I'm looking at um, I'm looking at the two teams, and I'm winning eighty nine point nine to eighty five. Point eight two, right? And the projections don't matter anyway, but the projections only have us like three and a half points off. Yeah. So I, I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're, you're, you're still plenty alive here. Because I got Todd Gurley who's got two arthritic knees and I got uh, Julio Jones who's got a bad hammy going and they're both projected very high, but I don't think they're going to get that. Uh, and T dropped and <laughs> And then there, what is this Agatha Christie live stream sports shirts? And then there was five, there was five, <laughs> and then there's four, and then there's three. It's like ten little Indians live stream. You're the killer. You're the real killer. Oh man, I don't know, man. Like this has just been so I mean, disappointing. It can, it can, all all that has to happen is um the running back for the Chiefs has to freaking not produce, which can happen if they're passing the ball the whole game. Yeah, and and um. And Robbie Gold tonight, if he's just kicking extra points all night, you're good. Yeah, I don't know, man, but here's a rundown. Uh, my team, Tacos Ghost Monkey, is down 85.82 to Pook Dogs, 89.90. Monday Night uh, Mayhem Lunchbox, 58.40 to Houdat Nation, 117.90. Uh, he's already finished. Lunchbox has a chance, but it's doubtful because it's like 30 points he's going to have to pick up. Uh, so he's gonna go to one and three, and uh, who that nation is gonna go to uh, two and two. Uh, backwoods veterans, uh, me shenaniganators, uh, is playing oops pops. That's you know, pops is toast. Uh, he already maxed out at 92.50. Uh, and uh, BV uh, me shenanigans is already ahead of him at 97.58, and he's got another couple guys going. Pterodactyl is gonna go down to. Uh, foolish samurais. Uh, it's yeah, it's not, it's not looking good. Um, but I'm about to go old fucking four, man. Like this is embarrassing. Pook, you know I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking shell this year. Jesus, I mean, I lose Saquon Barkley, and then freaking Nick Chubb goes down in the in the second quarter. I'm like, oh my god, can I catch a fucking break? You like, just need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, my friend. You're talking like a real loser, and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. I don't like that. Don't stop talking like such a loser. Look, I can't man. figure out how this is. You've got fewer points than one, two, three, three other teams. Yeah, his still lead. Yeah, because I'm a winner, pops. I think <laughs> like a winner. Okay. I think okay, my I team's gonna do that. well. I think I'm gonna beat my opponent. Oh man, I have never had this happen ever. I mean, this is just bad, bro. Like, I, it, this is just disconcerting. Like, everything I've done over the last 20, 30 years of fantasy football is seems completely invalidated by this season. I mean, I lost my number one running back, my number two pick overall. I'm possibly gonna lose my number two running back. You sound pathetic, Marie. Dude, you and, sound and, pathetic. And, and you know what sucks? You're embarrassing me, me, bro. Everybody's Stop holding it. on to all these running backs. They're stingy as shit in the 18 <laughs> league, and they won't trade me shit. Like, what do you I'm, want, dude? What do you want? Minute. What do you want? What do you want off my team? I need a fucking. <laughs> I need a running back. Want? At least a number two running back. I got. I got. Uh, I got a couple of running backs. I got a bunch of leagues. What? I got a bunch of leagues. I would. I got Ingram as like a, a backup in that. Mm-hmm. Would you be interested in Ingram? Well, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll have to talk. I mean, like, uh, Jesus, man, this is terrible. Like, I mean, I needed Ingram already. This week I had to start Ingram. I needed Ingram already because all the COVID cases. I think, uh, I think, um, J Dub's son has got Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon was a leader for fantasy football points. He, left he was on his bench. He left him on his bench. And, and I'm so what are you doing? He put 160 <laughs> points on the board. I know. Some of these decisions are tough, though. Look at me. I had, and I don't believe in this league, in a separate league. I had, I had the choice between starting David Johnson. 
Yeah. Or Will Fuller. Oh. And I actually, I actually waited out, waited out, waited out. I freaking started David Johnson. And of course, we know what happened. Yeah. Will Fuller went off. Yes, he did. He went off. <laughs> and I would have won that would have won me that game. That game's close. The guy I'm playing is projected to win, but that that would have won me the game for sure. There's no way out if I would just would have. And that's how it is. It's tough decisions every week starting what players you need to start. That's if you got a good enough team to make decisions like that, many. Dude. <laughs> I'm just getting bombarded by injuries, though. I mean, like, holy crap. It's just ridiculous. All right, let's go over NFL scores real quick. Uh, Thursday, we had the Broncos and the Jets. Uh, and this is embarrassing, but the Broncos did beat them 37-20, putting the Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 at 0-4. Uh, Vikings uh, defeated the Texans 31-23. And uh, thank you for not passing a touchdown pass to Jefferson, who I just picked up, you dicks. Um, uh, New Orleans Saints in a, uh, in a barn burner. Holy crap, they were down 14 points in the first quarter, but they came back to win 35-29. to 29. Uh, The Baltimore Ravens bounced back from their horrendous loss against the Chiefs, 31-17. to 17. Uh, The Arizona Cardinals fell to the Carolina Panthers, 21-31. to 31. Seattle Seahawks behind Russell Wilson beat the hapless Dolphins, 31-23. to 23. Uh, The L.A. Chargers fell to Tom Brady uh, in his five touchdown passes. Uh, Buccaneers won 30 to 31. The Steelers, the Titans game is postponed. Uh, Jaguars lost to the Bengals, which was a really neat game, and I'm glad I picked up uh, Joe Burrows, uh, because I'm gonna need him on a bye week when um, when uh, Josh Allen is out, uh, in a fucking ridiculous game. And this is getting to be NBA Tory, NBA territory, all uh, scoring is just getting driving me nuts. But the Browns beat up the Cowboys 49-38. to 38. Uh, Right now, the Giants and Rams are still in the fourth quarter. And uh, Ram- uh, Giants have the ball. Uh, but the Rams are leading 10-9. Uh, the Bills, of course, game is over. And Colts game, uh, I don't know. I have to refresh this maybe because uh, this is a bit uh, – yeah, there we go. Colts uh, defeated the Bears 19-11. Uh, actually, Allen Robinson came up for me. He actually exceeded his uh, projected points, but uh, he got a lot better. Douche. Uh, we've got the Eagles against the 49ers. San Francisco's favorite one. We're going to bet on that, I'm sure. Well, you know, we're going to argue about it and write it down. And then tomorrow night, we've got the Patriots against the Chiefs at 705 because of the delay because uh, Cam Newton got COVID. That'll be on 705 at CBS. KC's favorite win. Falcons 0-3 against the Packers, uh, who I'm praying and hoping that Todd Gurley somehow gets enough cortisone shot in his knees that he can get 100-plus yards and help me win, but I doubt it. Uh, but that's at 850. Uh, go over the scores from the other week. Uh, if I can find them. Jesus Christ. Go back on my notes here. Um, yeah, we had New Orleans... Uh, let me see. Let me go back up here and pull it up. Actually, on my uh, he's asking 49ers at Eagles. Let's see here. Hold on. Uh, week three. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, okay. So we had the Packers and Saints. All right. And uh, oh, that was one of the hardest games to watch. Yeah. Uh, my number one and two teams. So I was like. Pook, you took uh, New Orleans and you took the over. How so silly! You, you lost the uh, you lost the New Orleans, but you got the over because the over under was uh, fifty two, and so yeah, move by the way thirty. Yeah, it, I know uh, somebody that lost money on that over because it better early. Well, yeah, you never do that. We got it at the right money. price. We got it at the right price. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, you, you lost on that, but you won on the over. Uh, I won on both. Uh, I had the pack and the over. Uh, Our late. Had, uh, T had the pook and the under, so he won the he won the bet, but because the Packers covered, but uh, he lost on the under. Pops uh, took the Packers, but he lost on the under. And then we had KC uh, Baltimore, and Pook took KC in the over. 
Uh, you won on the uh, – <laughs> guess what the over was uh, on the uh, Chiefs-Ravens games? It was 54. Guess what the final total score was? Like 54. 54. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, not like a lot. <laughs> yeah, Pook won, on, Pook won the, on the spread. Uh, he covered on the spread but uh, lost on the over. Um, I took the Chiefs and I took the over, so I lost on that. Pops took the Chiefs and over, so he lost on the over. And uh, T – Picked the uh, Ravens and the under, so uh, yeah, he got squashed on that, uh, unfortunately. But uh, let's see, let's go back up to this week's uh, games, and we'll go ahead and make those picks, shall we? Let me write this down right here. Uh, we've got the Eagles and the 49ers. Uh, San Francisco was favored to win. Let's see if I write this down. Uh, Jade. And, oh, did, oh, there he is. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Your internet is <laughs> rubbish lately, bro. Oh, God. Uh, all right, so... All right, the over under is forty five point five. San Francisco. I did it. I did add you. Oh, San I don't Fr- see myself. Oh, no, you're there. You're yeah, there. Yeah, it's just my internet sucks really bad. <laughs> San Francisco is a fucking huge favorite minus nine. Uh, who wants to go first? Damn. Yeah, I, know, but I heard Anto go. Yeah. I, I, that's a bit much. Even bro, though Philadelphia is kind of terrible. Bro, right earlier now, but... in the week, that that line was seven and a half, man. Yeah, it's gone up. <clears throat> I what think had the Eagles have been this year. What do you think, Poop? When it moves that much, you know, you're supposed to go the other way. It's really hard yeah. for me to go the other way, though. It really is when it moves that much. Um I wonder if it's still moving. I wonder if it's going to get up to 10 or 10 and a half. Yeah, it probably will. Well, I And then know. what time cool. is it? It's, it's going to uh, kick off right now, right? Yeah, that's six minutes to kick off. That's, so it. that's where we're at. Much. All right, so give me the dog. Give me the dog and give me the over. All right, you're going to take the Eagles. Philly, yeah, give me Philly with the points. And the over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, points are San Francisco's favored by nine. Yeah, I know, right, Pop? So since you're shot, <laughs> you get to go first. <laughs> uh, I, I got to go with San Francisco. You're going to go with San Francisco. Yeah. You're gonna, so you're going to take the points and you're going to go over under? Where are you going to go? Over under now? Mm hmm. What is it? 45.5 points. 45.5. I hate those dicks when they do that. Those half yep. points, Pook. You know that screwed me more. Than... Under, I'll go under. Again. I got screwed by hook to today. Go right again. You're gonna go under, okay? Uh, Jade. Same as pops. 49ers in the under. In the under, okay. The under. Uh, <laughs> T, what do you got? T gong. T gong. Mm. He's he's, uh, he, he's back. There we go. There he is. <laughs> All right, T. Yeah. Drop. I'm back, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I I don't know if I'll, uh, how much longer I'll be able to be on the show with how shitty my internet is tonight, but uh, I'm going with the uh, I'm going with the Niners because the uh, Eagles are an absolute dog shit team this year. Yeah. I don't know if they're in a game at all this year. Carson Wentz looks like ass when he's out there. <laughs> yeah, he's he, talking about my player now. You know that terrible. They might have to, they might have to go to Jalen Hurts. Uh, Carson Wentz looks dog shit, I'm not, man. I'm not sure. I think um, I, I think the Patriots are going to give Cam Newton back to him because he know you're using him now. <laughs> um, right, what, was the over, what was 45, the over? Forty-five. 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 Uh, I'm going under. I don't think either of these teams are going to score a ton of points. Yeah, I think, I think the defense will. <clears throat> <laughs> and he Get dropped that, that out of here. I'm going with San Francisco and the under. Um, all right, let's go back. 
because we got two Monday night games. That's uh, a tough game. That's a tough game for you to paint me in a corner on because you know you got me taking a a crappy team and it's a potential blowout. But that line just moved too much. I could I I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it at nine. Yeah, I hear you. So I'm taking. Uh, Philly. I won't be surprised if it if I get blown out though. You're, you're, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're fine. I mean, who the hell knows, man? That's why they play the games, I guess. This one is interesting. Um, it's a postponed game, and I don't know where they're coming up with this, I guess, because Cam's not going to be playing because he's got the COVID. Um, La but, Rona. Uh, La Rona. Um, but Casey is favored by uh, 11, which is who? Um, let's see here. I gotta write this down. Damn, I should really do this before the fucking show, right? Uh, <laughs> uh there's Terrell. He's back. Weird. Um, all right. And Jade. All right. So <laughs> the over under is forty nine point five. Wow. Jesus, they're going yeah. high this week. Yep. Um. All right, so who wants to go first? Uh, well, since my internet might die at any moment again, I'll go first. Um, I'm taking the Chiefs because without Cam, uh, I don't, I don't know how many points the Patriots are going to be able to score. Okay, um, so you take the Chiefs and you go over under. Yeah. Uh, what was what was the over under on this? Forty nine point five. Forty nine point five. Wow. I'll go on it again just because I don't know if the Patriots are going to be able to put any b- points on the board. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, who? God, Pook, do you know who's uh, filling in for Cam? Fuck. Yeah. It's, is, it, is it Hoyer, not, is it? No. It's somebody, no, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, somebody it's look a, it up. And make it's sure a journeyman right. backup for sure. A guy, that's, a guy that's been in there before. I know. I recognize the name, whoever it yeah, was. Yeah, he's. He's been the backup in New England for a bit, but I forget the guy's name. My internet sucks so much. I'm not trying to look anything look up right now. I'm looking it up, man. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to open any new windows up. Brian Hoyer, bro. Like I said. All I'm right, Brian Hoyer, bro. All right, so he's going cheap yeah. and under. That's who they're starting. Yeah, then I'm it, definitely yeah. I'm on the internet, going under. On the internet, it, it lays it, it lists J- Jared uh Jared Sutton. Stidham. But, that's the guy with. Nah, man, Hoyer's gonna start, dude. Uh, Hoyer's starting that game. Mm, all right. Because um, I heard Bell check announce it. That's why. <laughs> All right, Pook. So, who are you gonna take? Give me the pats and the points. All right, and, and give me give me the over just because I don't like rooting for the under. It's no fun. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's so it's boring. So it horrible. is. It is. Pops. Chiefs, and uh, I'm going over. Chiefs and over. All because right. they got a quarterback and do anything, so who knows? Yeah, this is true. And uh, I'm kind of leaning that way. I think I'm going to go Chiefs and I'm going to go over. Uh, all, yeah, it's going to be all Chiefs. The over under on just the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Jade. And it's probably 49.5. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably. Uh, what do you got, Shane? Chiefs, and I'm gonna be boring and go under. Chiefs and under. All right, all right, and we got another one. Uh, come on, internet. There we go. All right, so <laughs> the next game we got. Oh, this is a tough one. Uh, Falcons versus uh, me and T's Green Bay Packers. I suppose Dad a little bit. Well, he's a little bit of a traitor with his Bengals, but uh, we'll forgive him for that. Uh, it's 0-3 Falcons against the 3-0 and Packers. Uh, let's see here. It pops. Mini. T and, and Pook. All right. There 
go. All right. So the the uh, Packers are favored. They're minus six and a half. The over uh, under is holy shit. Fifty-six point five. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my Pook. goodness, Pook! What is that all about? Come on, bro! Like, really? That's <laughs> I think this, I think this is an easy parlay, man. I really oh do. I think this God. is easy money, bro. Dude, easy I'm going to go. Out. I'm going to take the pack, but I'm going the pack under. over, baby. Easy how, money. How, how do you go with a team? I mean, it hasn't won, and they're only given the six and a half points. Jesus Christ. I don't know. They're scoring points in garbage time. That's why. And they uh, already know. Yeah, That's yeah. why. It's going to be a freaking burial. It's going to be a blowout. It's going to be a guaranteed winner. And then in the fourth quarter, you're going to get some garbage trash touchdowns. They're going right. to push it over. Fine. I'm taking the Packers and over. All right. I changed my mind. Uh, but it's locked in, so I can't change it anymore. I wrote it down. Uh, <laughs> Jade, what do you got? Go, Pack. Go. Go, Pack, go. She's got the pack. And are you taking the over or the under? I'm going to go over on this one. You're going to go over. All right. Wow. All right, Pook. Packing the over, baby. Packing the over. Wow. Send it. Send it in. This is a winner. <laughs> this dog can hunt. <laughs> uh, T, what you got before you drop off again? Right. I think after this, I will be done. So if I drop off again, I think I'm done for the night. But uh, <laughs> it, it, my internet sucks. What can I say? Um, this feels like a trap game to me. I don't know. Maybe it's from years of watching the Packers, but I, for some reason, you maybe the Packers. Of, still, if you have a flashback, maybe the Packers. Dick. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe the Packers. Well, maybe the Packers pull this out, but um, I'm going the Falcons. Ooh. I think it'll be a close game. So you're going maybe, under. The Packer, maybe the Packers still win it, but six Do you and don't a half think they're not going to cover. Off. Okay. And, All right. This is my 5,000 star lock. It's my, it's my lock of the year. You send it in. Look, it's the pack. Send it in on the pack. This look, is it. Take, take look, out look, a more second look. mortgage on your home. Send it in on the pack. It's hey, going to yeah. happen. There's a reason I don't feel comfortable. The, Burial, look look oh, up wow. Julio Jones' numbers against the Packers. He's, he's a monster hurt. against he's, the Packers. He's, 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 he's a, a, he's a killer though. against the Packers. Julio the puts up big himself. numbers. Julio puts up big numbers against the Pack. Just not the he same. Better, he better. He better fucking put him. <laughs> I desperately need him to. He does. He's not the same he man. Does. Even even when the I know he's not. Lose, That's Julio sucks. has monster games. He's gonna have over a hundred yards this, at this least. Dude, you know, you know, some dudes are in the NFL play a long career and they barely ever get injured. You know, other dudes have problems with injuries throughout their career and it, it cuts them short. You know. Yeah. I think no, Julio, Julio puts up monster games against the Packers every time he plays them, and I'm worried about it. So I'm going with the Falcons, and I'm gonna go with the over because I think neither of the defense are gonna fucking suck. Are gonna both gonna look like shit. <laughs> okay, all right, pops, what do you got? I got Green Bay and over. Green Bay and over. All righty, all righty, all righty. Um. Anything else we want to talk about uh, football-wise? I, I mean, any surprises, injuries? I mean, I, I would appreciate if you didn't bring up injuries because, uh, you know, uh, oh, Saquon Barkley, Nick Chubb. Uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man, I can't. Oh. Alan Lazar got just put on the uh, IR for the Packers, too. Yeah, so and I picked him up. I'm like, ooh, I got this guy. I'm going to put him on my lineup. He's going to be a fucking lights-out dude. And... Yeah, I dropped him for MVS, and then he, he drops off. He drops off. He's in the IR. Now I got to pick up MVS again in case I I need somebody, and I did. But holy crap! Yeah, like, if MVS could hold on to the ball, he would be a great receiver. Dude, he's he just, fucking. He he, uh, who's the guy from uh, uh, the replacement? He gets open all the time. He just can't, can't hold on to the ball. He drops Riotary. so many damn paced, passes. Who, who's the guy from uh, the replacements? Clifford Franklin. That's MVS. That's Clifford Franklin. Like the fastest guy in the league, but 
I mean, he can't catch a ball that hits him in his freaking hands. Like, I don't understand. Like, I re- I learned this when I was a little kid. Triangle, bitch. You, you, you catch it the, right there. You catch it, catch it in the triangle. You can't drop that pass ever. And, you know, now it's all about the, the wicked one hunt grab and all this other shit. And it's like, dude, just catch the ball. Like, bro, just catch. That's your only job. Catch the ball. And, and just, he just drops. I mean, God, he would well, add. He, and you know what? It, it all went downhill for him was uh, last year when the Packers played the Eagles and then they got that, uh, they didn't call that pass interference call on him. He got mm-hmm. jabbed in the under the face mask. And ever since then, he hasn't been able to catch for shit. <laughs> he was doing head. Actually, he just go to yeah, it was it's in his head or something. Cause yeah, he looked great in those first three weeks and then week four hit. And he looked like after he got that fist underneath the face mask, he looks like shit since then. He just can't catch. Jesus Christ. It's just, oh, it's just brutal. All right, any uh, any more NFL news before I get to the second least thing I want to talk about, which is baseball. Unfortunately, you know, because uh, it was a good week for me at all, uh, or you know, for how many you bet on the Reds? Go ahead. No, uh-uh, no, no. <laughs> Hope he's not eliminated, huh? Yeah, yeah. For a run, the whole. The whole NL Central got eliminated. Oh, God, and we had more teams in the playoffs than anybody, and we just got smoked. It was ridiculous. It was so brutal. And James, even my son, was pissed. Like, I don't even know how he knows what's going on, but at the end of the game, he just stood up off the couch, did this thing with his hands, and just walked into the kitchen. And I'm like... <laughs> Really, dude? Like, you were that upset about it, huh? Like, God, man, I'm pissed too, but Jesus, bro. Like, he was just, he saw me, he saw me upset and was just like, I'm taking it to another level, dad. And just, ah, you know, and I, I curse the poor boy by being a, a Cubs fan. And, and uh, you know, my family always jokes with me. And I, and I hit the freaking lottery with my in laws. I really, for the first time, well, now it's kind of second this time, but. They're really awesome. I, I love I love Jeff and Marianne. They're they're just amazing freaking people, and they're so sweet to me and so uh, tolerant of me. Which you kind of got to be with me. I'm a Have little a bit great of a night, Richie. Weirdo. See you, Richie. Thanks for tuning in, brother. Um, but yeah, he he was upset, and so here we are. Uh, Tampa Bay defeated Toronto. No big surprise there. Tampa Bay has been uh, a little bit of a surprise this year, but they're going to face uh, the New York Yankees who are just red hot. I was going to wear a Yankees hat tonight, and I can't find where the hell it is, but uh, <laughs> uh, Yankees defeated Cleveland. Uh, Houston, despite the uh, not being able to bank trash cans, beat up on the Minnesota Twins, so they advanced. Uh, Oakland, who has been one of the great surprises this year, uh, defeated, thank God, the Chicago White Sox. Screw that place. Every time I, when I was living in Chicago, every time I drove by that stadium, I flipped it off, mm-hmm. uh, which caused some confusion with some drivers on I-94, but, you know, another story. <laughs> um, so in the second round, you got Tampa Bay versus New York, uh, Houston versus Oakland. On the NL side, the Dodgers, not surprisingly, defeated the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, sorry, T. I know he's not back on. He's not going to come back on because his internet is rubbish right now. But uh, San Diego, hey, uh, behind some really, really young and amazing talent, uh, they defeated the St. Louis Cardinals, which is awesome because I don't hate any other anybody else besides the White Sox more than they hate St. Louis. Uh, so in second round, you have the Dodgers versus San Diego, which should, should be a really good series. I, I think the Dodgers are going to take it, but uh, I, San Diego's probably going to get them really, really frustrated. I think San Diego's one more year away from being a World Series contender, but I think they're well on their way. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, beloved Cubbies, uh, they got dropped by the Mi- Miami Marlins, who... <laughs> If you pay attention to baseball enough, like I do, uh, last year they were atrocious, and everybody wanted to hang Derek Jeter, Derek Jeter, Derek Jeter. Um, and but that franchise has done a complete 180, and and they are very scary, very young, and too young to know exactly what they're in. So they advanced, swept the Cubs. 
Um, despite a really good second game uh, pitch by uh, uh, U Darvish, I mean, he was great through seven innings and gave it one home run, and then the bullpen just imploded, which is one of our problems. But uh, and, and congrats to them. Uh, Atlanta defeated the Cincinnati Reds very unsurprisingly. Uh, the Reds snuck in there. They were the lowest seed, and, uh, and good for Cincinnati uh, to pop back in there. But uh, I've said for the last couple of years, Atlanta is a team on the rise, and I'm already going to go and, and pick them to just swamp the Marlins. But you know, we'll see. We'll see about that. But uh, my picks to go to the World Series as of right now, Jesus, I can't believe I'm saying it. New York, Houston. Um, or the next round in New York and Houston, and then uh, I'm gonna take the Dodgers and uh, Atlanta. And uh, god, I can't believe I'm saying it the Yankees in the World Series and Atlanta in the World Series, and I'm taking the Yankees in uh, oh, it hurts it, me it, to say it. <laughs> games. You have no idea how much it hurts me to say I it. I know, that. but it's like you get to see the pain. <laughs> oh, it's brutal, man. You know, I hate that it, it, you know. Uh, I'm going to bring on, I think I'm going to try and bring on Thomas Brickner next week so we can get a little more in-depth baseball because uh, he, he is uh, a baseball guru, uh, much better than myself even. And uh, he is a Yankees fan, but he's he's pretty objective to, you know, looking at it the whole season and every team. So we'll see what happens there. But, uh, oh, man, if the Yankees win the World Series, oh, I'll have to wear the hat again. Oh, it's going to be brutal. Uh, Poop, John what do you Rudolph think? is checking in and he's calling you out. Shoot. Oh, God, really? It's not the bar, but all right, fine, whatever. Um, it's for you. <laughs> I know. It's not right? a bar thing, it's a you thing. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. All right, here you go. There you go. There you go, John. Love you. Thanks for tuning in. Please share the show out. What do you guys think about this? Um, this shortened COVID-19 baseball season. There's one thing I like about it. I don't it. like it. I like the snap of the of the ball against the catcher's mitt. I love not even – I was walking away. Michelle <laughs> laughed at me. I was walking away. I think I was watching – Um, who was I watching? I was watching the um, Yankees and, uh, and uh, Cleveland game the other day, and I heard – the, I was walking away, wasn't even looking at the TV, heard a crack of the bat. I was like, that's gone. She goes, what? I'm like, I'm just telling you, it's gone. And sure enough, it was a home run by Aaron Judge. Uh, I love hearing the crack of the bat. I love hearing the snap in the mitt of the catcher's mitt. But uh, I do wish the fans were back there. But, I mean, what do you guys think about this season so far? What do you guys think about the playoffs? I Anybody? think the fan towns are nuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I really do. I'm right back, guys. Uh, that, that, this, that, that, let's hear what's going on. It's got it has no sense putting phony sound behind it. I hate that. I hate it all. It's crap. <laughs> you just it's hate baseball. What are you talking man. about? I, I used to hate baseball. I told you I I found my inner baseball for the show, and I really did. I I at one time was a bit of a baseball fan, especially when they were cracking home runs all over the place. Yeah. Uh, during the steroid era, that was some exciting ball to watch. You know, not just the chicks dig the long ball, the pook digs the long ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, baseball was fun to watch when there was more home runs. But that's okay, man. It's it's it's, it's baseball, and it's a, yeah, I, a pitcher, I was it's a pitcher's game. When, I noticed when, that, when that, that, uh, the home run deal was going on, it was fun to be there. There's no doubt no, about that. It was a blast. I mean, it wasn't exactly a pitcher's game then, was it? Nope. <laughs> no, man, it was it was pretty cool. Is that pretty cool to watch? You know, I mean, baseball purists don't like any of that nonsense. What's that? But no, I just um, the home run derby, the McGuire and the, um, 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 um. they're way more. Com I'm saying that um, baseball purists are way more comfortable with the pitcher having the advantage. Well, I mean, it, that's a weird thing, though, man. I mean, like, look, um, you know, people bitch about, always bitch about Clayton, Clayton Kershaw not being a playoff pitcher, and he was absolutely that the other day. I had 13 Ks through eight innings. Um, look, I mean, 
I think the a pitcher has an advantage as long as you haven't seen them more than once or twice. But after that, it kind of goes away unless this stuff is just nasty. Was clean Kershaw's was the other night. Um, you know, I, I, <sighs> pitching really always has a seamed upper hand, especially in the playoffs. Well, yeah, and, and I put a thing on sports shirts the other night, and please go check that out and give a give us a like and a follow. It was Garrett Cole. Uh, he had a 97 mile an hour fastball going that night, and a 87 mile an hour knuckle curve. Which, you know, a curve is generally you grab the seams right here, and you're thumbing on another one, and you just snap it over. Well, what knuckle curve is, in which they should teach young youngsters, they shouldn't be. In, but there's a lot of teams that are, are traveling teams that are that are guilty of this. They they let these kids throw regular curveballs, but knuckle curve is a lot easier on your elbow and shoulder. And what you do instead of having the finger up, you put your knuckle up on it, and then you snap it. It's just a are lot you just easier. doing that to flip me off right now? No. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> but if you want me to, I can. No, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 okay, all right. But uh, the overlay, you got to go check that out on Sports Church, uh Facebook page. It is unreal uh, to look at a 97, 97 on our fastball, which you have to gear up for as a hitter. You have to. Um, and then all of a sudden, like 85 to 90% to the plate, that ball just drops off the table. Yeah. You're just not hitting it, and it's just brutal. I mean, I went to the Louisville Slugger Museum, and I and I took bats against the uh, virtual Cole Hamill, and I paid twenty bucks to get ten pitches. I hit one, and it was a <laughs> I hit one, and it was a rocket. And it was the only fastball he threw me, and it, I destroyed it. But everything else was just. I just whiffing and whiffing and whiffing. And it was with my second wife. And she's like, oh, I thought you were a really good baseball player. I said, D do I play for a major league baseball team? No, I'm like, a, I'm an above average baseball player. But, uh, yeah, it, oh, it was brutal. And I still stand by my statement that hitting a baseball is the most difficult thing in sports. There, it, it, there, you cannot argue me on that. There's just no way. It is brutal. I mean, I remember a guy, Roy Oswald, who would throw – like 96 miles an hour and drop a 68 mile an hour curveball. I mean, you're just not hitting that shit. It's just, uh, just that's why I still love the game. And I don't know what they do promotion wise or social, social, social justice warrior wise. It is still to me the most amazing game in, in the world. It is just unbelievably difficult to do. Um, and yes, I'll admit pitchers are generally the stupidest people on the field, but moving on. Uh, we got Dean Cerny. What's up, you mother bitches? Shoot. Uh, mother of bitches. course he is. He finally <laughs> joined. Where the hell you been, bro? Well, he says and, in 2020, Browns win the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, uh, I don't think they're going to beat the, the uh, Kansas City, but uh, they're on their way, man. They looked they looked okay. Their defense still is just, eh. When you drop that many points, it, I know they beat the uh, – Cowboys, but oh, it was not a pretty game for their Cowboys. defense. Yeah, at all. So, oh, uh, John Woodward says another sign of the apocalypse. <laughs> I like that. Um, I, you know, I don't know. It, this has been such a weird year and such a weird year for everything and every sport and uh, baseball uh, as well. Um, but I'm gonna stick by my picks. I think it's. I, I really do think it's gonna be the Yankees and. Uh, oh, I'm gonna go with it. Yankees and Dodgers. We'll see. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be Yankees and Dodgers. But who's gonna win that? You know, God. Um, I don't know. Um, the Dodgers are just beating the brakes off of everybody this year. Yeah. But Yankees have come on. They've found their stride. They have come on so hot so lately that oh, I really wish. I need to find that Yankee hat so I can put it on and jump on the bad wagon <laughs> just to be a dick. I mean, I was really expecting uh, the uh, – I just to get knocked out before, before they get to the – Really? Yeah. Just because they were so dominant all year long. And, and yeah. they were going to just tumble. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. You know, you know, like the old Seattle Mayors of old, and they won 115 games and got knocked out in the first round. Yeah, I, I can see that, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Jay, what do you think? The Yankees, because that's a habit of theirs. 
<laughs> they just go all the way all the time. Keep the yeah, they either go all the way or they implode. Yeah, this is true. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I honestly don't really give a shit. Like, I do pay a little bit of attention to baseball when, the, like, the Rockies and stuff like that. They've been getting a little better and better here and there. Um, mostly, um, the thing I hate about this year is that not going to a game at least once this season has, like, it's has me heartbroken. <laughs> I let my son skip school to go to a Rockies game at least once or not every time but if we go get tickets during during the school day or something like that yeah. but you know now you're watching and I'd like the like being able to hear the sound of the bat and the catcher's mitt and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that is awesome. I love that part. I like it. that. Only good components also, of it. Yeah. But it's so sad like when like they're hitting these home runs or into the bench or the Crowd, the crowd and it's like taking out their cut the cutouts and the teddy bears. <laughs> the poor teddy bears are getting hit with these balls. <laughs> but yeah, so like I'm mixed on this on this season. I just it's almost like what's the point? But I do like like the sound like you the sounds and stuff like that. So like hearing I'll that. You, I'll tell beautiful. you what, as 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 a casual fan that I am, a serious casual fan, right? Like when I say casual, I mean casual. Um, man, it's hard for me to get into a season when I can't attend a ballpark. Mm-hmm. It really is. Man, is there going to be an asterisk next to this year? Who knows, man? Maybe. I mean, oh, it's, it's brutal because my wife signed me up for uh, before the season started to uh, uh, do – uh, a home run challenge for uh, what was it? Home, uh, what is it? Twenty one century to go to Wrigley Field and get a pitch to try to hit a home run to win a house, and that got killed, of course. But uh, not that I know if I could hit a dinger with a wooden bat either. But uh, it definitely have to be like a, <laughs> a very stick bat, like maybe thirty inches and twenty eight ounces or twenty seven ounces maybe, but uh, I don't think I could hit it anymore. I mean you'd have to just train shoulder. oh your shoulder injury. Yeah. I mean but but it's not the one that's gonna like really affect it. You know, it's it, my left one would be the one if my left was really fucked up, which is a little bit, but my right one wouldn't affect it that much. Man, if you had a chance to win a house, man, you should train. <laughs> you should train. You should get you should get whatever. You get a cork bat. <laughs> Man, get you have to get. Um, I know I can do with a with Sammy a Sosa's pharmacy. I know I can do with a minus um, aluminum. A <laughs> aluminum. Yeah, aluminum. Uh, 20, 27 inches. Uh, twenty seven ounce minus five bat. I can you do think, that. You think you could find Sammy Sosa's pharmacist? <laughs> I'm not going on. Is that we get, has that, <laughs> in the house? <laughs> You're well, not going to win a house? Really? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm... <laughs> Look, it's got to be in one place. It's got to be in the, in the bottom left-hand corner of the strike zone, and I've got to just swing out of my mind, and hopefully I don't pull it past the, the uh, left field foul pole. But, uh, yeah, I'm not hitting out oppo. That's for sure. It's going to be a dead pole fucking uh, left field uh, home run for sure. But, uh I mean, I've hit him. I hit. I, I mean, in semi pro, I, I broke the same window that Kenny Lofton did at Calumet High School. How, so, you're not, yeah, how old it. are you now? 44 with a shoulder injury? 43. You need, yeah. yeah, you need to go find Sammy Solstice's pharmacist if you're going to be <laughs> seriously entertaining this. <laughs> Any of these guys that I've seen in MMA that had a long career, like they took a dive and then they went back up at the end. Man, I know those guys were all on steroids. Hey man, I hit a home run two years ago in, in softball. So I mean, that's something, right? You, know, you see those big, huge, massive guys jack them all the time, and you look at me, and I'm like, I'm not a very big guy at all. Uh, I'm like I think right now, even with my dad bought. Okay, him. all right, okay, maybe not Sammy Sosa's pharmacist. Okay, you... <laughs> Alex Barry... Rodriguez's pharmacist. <laughs> Barry Bonds trainer. There Very you go. There you go. Now we're talking. He will get you in the shape you need. You're going to just have to do whatever he tells you. Take the clean. Take the clear. He's going to do whatever it takes to win you that house. You know it, man. You know. And then when the and when it comes crashing down, 
when everything comes crashing down, there's a federal investigation and your steroid use, you know, he ain't going to rat you out either. <laughs> You're freaking safe, bro. This guy, you got to get this guy on board. <laughs> you got to find Barry Bonds trainer and just give him a freaking commission off of this and, last and time make I it happen. In a batting cage, I went to, uh, it was a Louisville uh, slugger museum and their highest uh, batting cage was 60 miles an hour. And it took me, like 10 throws to actually be able to time that because it was I was ahead of everything. It was so slow. And when I finally did, and my wife was laughing at me, she was like, oh, big baseball player. And then finally I started crushing him. But, I mean, oh, God, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I could. But Who's uh, going to be sh- who's gonna be firing these pitches at you? Oh, fuck. Uh, I don't know. Anybody. Is there going to be like a former major leaguer? Are they going to be like little fat pitches? Like I would love like 80, 85 low inside corner. That, that That's my uh, that's my zone right there for sure. Unless it's a lefty and a lefty. Uh, if I get a, actually. Dude, we got to cork your bat for sure. Like your dad's yeah. saying, we're going to have to cork your bat. Dude. <laughs> I need a lefty who wants to get in my kitchen. And then I always got insulted by that, by left-handers. Uh, so, yeah, a lefty wants to get in my kitchen, low and inside. And, and I think I might have a chance. Might, just small, like, you know, like a 30% chance of jacking it. But, <laughs> I don't know what it's about left-handed pitchers, but it look, always looked like a fucking volleyball coming to me. You know, I couldn't bat 200 against right-handed pitchers, but but left-handers, I was like 450. I was retarded, so I don't know why and Dad doesn't know, even understand. We should talk about it. He's like, I don't get it either. I'm like, I fucking no shit. I don't either, but I just used to crush him, so. Anyways, uh, we're getting close to the end. Um, anything else we want to talk about uh, sports-wise? Because we're, we're kind of running towards the end of the show. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Earlier I said some really irresponsible stuff. You know, don't don't take a second loan out on your house to bet on the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> 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 I don't want anyone freaking <laughs> want coming no, after me. just did too, right? It's like fucking crazy. Oh. God. Oh, God. I just lost something. Uh oh, I'm up against Pterodactyl next week. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. Oh, well, he, he scores a lot of points, don't he? That's that yes, was his he does. Point. He's leading the league in points. Yeah, he is. Some bitch. <laughs> this is my worst fantasy league season ever i don't know what the fuck happened like i just i don't know man like i just got bad luck i guess i just choke it up like i don't know if it was my fault but like i lost my number two pick i might lose my <laughs> my number two running back like oh we're, we're I, I think i'm gonna start a group uh on facebook so we can talk shit about each other on uh facebook and put videos up and i think it'd be funny and, and whoever has the best video every week talking shit video we'll put it up on sports church uh right at the beginning of the show so and jay dropped off again jesus yep. he popped away <laughs> he doesn't like baseball and, and, i mean he's got a team in hometown but there she is She's back. All right. Like, hey, go back here. <laughs> I have no idea. Was, I don't know because, like, I I went and checked it. Like, uh, the extra laptops and stuff. Like, la, 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 la. I can't speak. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the uh. extra laptops and stuff with the remote learning. They have their own little like Chromebooks and whatnot, and all those have been disconnected. Um, Rob, I can still hear him outside cursing at the car because he's got to do friggin' um, or he's trying to fix the exhaust or something like that. So I can hear him outside cursing. So he's not on his computer, and I don't like for whatever reason my connection has been disrupted like so many flipping times. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I'm- this is <laughs> supposed to be the easiest uh, production. Uh, form for uh live streaming and we've had so many problems with people just dropping constantly it's weird no and it's honestly it's my internet my internet's doing it it's not so i thought even if we were on something else i would still be dropping it's gotta be a way we can trace that um 
so that we can we can record our signal so that it shows the strength of the signal. Uh, but to be honest with you, I've been out of the computer business for so long, I really don't know how to do it. There should be a way to do it. Yeah, I would think so. Um, hey, uh, Pook, when are you going to come down to Cincinnati, man? He moved. Are you muted? He is moved. Yes, okay, he, he is. He me. Every, time, every fucking time. Every show. Jesus. <laughs> well, in one of the times you were supposed to come onto the bar, and he's like, hey, do you mind if Pook comes on? I was like, am I allowed to mute him? <laughs> oh, well, you're always allowed to mute the Pook, but like, he's the when pook. he. Mute the pook. When are you coming down to Cincinnati? Yeah, when are you coming down to Cincinnati, bro? Well, I'm not even sure how long I'm going to be here in Indiana for sure. But uh, how, what, kind of drive, what kind of drive is that? Is that like a five-hour drive? Yeah, about that, I think. I'll have to come down and see you here soon. Yeah, you, you got to meet the boy, man. You got to meet the boy. Yeah. Who's going to yeah, see you on your wedding weekend. Stuff. He's nothing like John. <laughs> right on. Right on. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to, I'll have to figure this out. Oh, and it's been okay. forever since I've been out to the East Coast. Like 12 years. Well, I think I, we need to talk George Poros and Hammond of the IRS uh, party in uh, Ohio and maybe possibly Columbus. So I reckon them out here. OH. Just, yeah, come out to the OH. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, I suppose we do final thoughts. Uh, we can stay on talking after that. But uh, Jade Lopez, why don't you go with our final thoughts? Um, thank you again for having me. I know that I'm not the most. Uh, knowledgeable about sports i have the little tidbits and whatnot that i can add and um, thank you again for having me on yeah Pop but you're pretty face and people it. like you so <laughs> yeah that's if true I, if i can help i'll help <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate it thank you so but, much uh yeah for your final thoughts um take care of yourself take care of your family you know and if you really need uh feel like you're spinning out feel like you're alone as far as like with COVID and quarantining, kids going back to school or not send it, don't send them back to school and this and that, just like reach out. You're not alone. We're all going through it together. So we're here for you. There you go. All right, Pops. Um, the battle's going to come down between New Garden and Dixon. That's going to be in two weeks. And that's going to be down in St. Petersburg. And to be honest with you, I don't have the slightest idea. I mean, it really requires New Garden to win and and Dixon to fall out in order for Dixon or New Garden to win it. So it's just it's Dixon's race to lose. Well, I think next year <clears throat> we're going to have to do a remote broadcast from uh, Nashville. All right, yeah, that'd be cool. Race. If, we, if you can find a way to get uh, uh, our very dear friend and one of my favorite people in the whole world, Jim Trado, um, press passes to that race, that might help a lot. And we yeah, can that do that. Cool. That would be awesome uh, uh, to, to, to do the live, do the sports church during the race. That would be awesome. Uh, my final thoughts. Hey, remember, never to take a permanent solution to temporary problem. I've had a pretty shitty week. Uh, and it's actually a lot shitter than I will let anybody know. But, um, you know, hey, uh, the sun's going to rise and the world's going to turn and it will do it without you. So remember to just not take that permanent solution temporary problem. Please don't do that. I have been online at three, four, five o'clock in the morning for hours, uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, uh, trying to talk guys and women out of uh, taking that permanent solution. So uh, please don't do that. I've been there. I've got the member members only jacket, the bumper sticker, and all that shit. So uh, you know, stop doing it, please. And uh, always reach out if you're hurting. And, and I know we're not good at it. I get it. I'm, I am one of the worst at it, but uh, just reach out. All right. Uh, Pook, what you got? Well, just, you know, don't let the gambling get out of hand. You know, earlier <laughs> I earlier I was way out of line. So, you know, hopefully no one, no one listened to me earlier and is going to do anything crazy because I, I've heard people, you know, people have touted games – and I've made mistakes betting them. 
So Oh, I have two. You remember one of them. Yeah. So I mean <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. It's for entertainment only. So, you know, have fun with it. You know, I'm not saying don't bet. I'm just saying don't bet where you can't afford to lose, you know. So right. Don't bet. Don't you bet. Have, you have crack you up. They are actually setting odds on mini car races now. Oh really? Yeah. No <laughs> shit. Huh. It's wild. It's it wild, and, and and they show them and show them during the telecast. I, that's the other part. That's wild. I've seen that, but I actually was in Vegas at the time, and I saw that, and I didn't, I didn't know who to bet on. There's so much other stuff to bet on too. So, <laughs> I thought about, I honestly thought about messaging you, pops, and asking you who to bet on, but I'm like, ah. No, <laughs> he's your best. Best no, guess. I know, I know, <laughs> but here, no, but I was like, I was like, I, the reason I'm like, ah, is because it was like, I had other stuff I could bet. At the, I was, it was NBA was open, and so was, uh, so was, uh, I was something else I was betting too besides it. MMA. There's a shit ton of MMA at the time, you know, there's a shit ton of MMA. So there was a lot of stuff for me to bet. So I really, I didn't get into the, the car racing, but I saw the car racing and, and that was like, I don't remember them having it before as well. I'm saying you're right. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that they're offering odds now. Probably has a lot to do with like, uh, DraftKings getting involved and, yeah. um, and, uh, who's the one fan duel out here, you know, but yeah. they got involved and they kind of changed. They're trying to change the game a little bit. They're kind of changing the way things are done. So I, I could see like, they, they put that out first, I bet. That's what I'm going to guess. Absolutely. All right. Hey, Dad, you know what I want to end the show with? And uh, he's one of your favorite comedians, so I'll let you end the show with it. What are we talking about? Red Skelton again? Yes! <laughs> you know, the other part that we never hear about is Mrs. Calabash. I always used to go to Mrs. Calabash, too. <laughs> that was... That was uh, Red was the... The ultimate entertainer. He just he just uh, kept it clean and so had everybody cracking up. So uh, do the same, John. I I want you to do. It. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were the one who I couldn't watch horror movies when I was young, man. But it was no problem for you and Mom to let me watch George Carlin, Red Skelton, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams. So. You get to do this. You get to end the show. <laughs> what was this? It's this tagline again. I can't remember. Um, oh, I can't remember her name. Look it up. Look it up. We got right. time. All right, we I'll, get, I'll get it. Time. Here we go. Dead air. Damn it. I can see where you get the do, 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 when you're looking things up and doing things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. My dad. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You'll see me when he put me on TV when I was in high school, which was super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we had fun with that one. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I got a lot of shit, but I also got a lot of compliments, too. So, you know, when I was go kart racing and whatnot. So, did you win? Uh, never. I wish I could find that video of uh, the thing we did at the auto show. <laughs> that was fun. With, um, it's got to be around there somewhere. It's got to be out there somewhere. Well, I can't remember. I can't remember how she. He's. This is terrible. Do, do, do. <laughs> Until Dad <laughs> finds this, you know any good jokes? <laughs> you got a good joke? Uh, do you? Um. All right, I'll tell a story, a little quick story. I don't know. I'll just say that the one that I just found is good night and God bless. All <laughs> right. Go. Go. That was his, <laughs> his other famous sign off. He used to say something else. I can't remember what it was. Have a good night and God bless. All right. Hey, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, uh, sharing the show. And if you catch us later, please share us out again. I know a lot of people are uh, bitchy about sports, and, and I understand that. I, I really do get it. Uh, with the social justice warrior shit, but uh, you know, I still love my sports. I still love my baseball, football, soccer, everything. Uh, in between the whistles, it's still one of my favorite things. It's one of my escapes. 
especially now because I've gone through a lot of shit this week. I'm going to go through a lot more in the in the future months that I won't talk about on air. But uh, yeah, I mean it, it is still an escape, and no matter how many times these commentators try to make it political, fuck them. Um, when it's between the whistles, is still a great game, no matter what we're talking about. So. On that, I love you all. Thank you, Pops. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, T. Thank you, uh, Anton. You know, you're some of my best friends in the whole world, and I love you to death. And, uh, yeah, we're going to kill it right here. So, uh, thank you for tuning us, Porsche. Please share us out again if, if you're not even watching live.